To create a new culture means you have to define your culture as a vision of the future. But most people, their cultures are based on the past present reality. What does that mean? We are in a changing world. And the world is changing faster than most people can keep up. And if you are going to stay defined by a memory of the past, you will not keep up with this culture. What defines the vision of the future to change a culture? And the answer is a very clear intention, a clear purpose combined with an elevated emotion. And when you combine a clear intention, like a vision of the future, along with an elevated emotion of inspiration and joy, you will create an empowered individual. But here's the problem. To the materialist who's waiting for their wealth to show up to feel abundant, they're in their past. The person who's waiting for the success to feel empowered is in their past. The person who's waiting for their healing to feel wholeness, they're in their past. The person who's waiting for their riches to come to feel gratitude they're in their past, they're materialists. In other words, you have to feel empowered in order for your success to show up. You have to feel abundant for your wealth to find you. <laughs> you have to be in gratitude for you to create the life that you want. And by you teaching your body emotionally what that future could feel like, ahead of the actual experience is changing your biology because most people wait for something outside of them to change how they feel inside of them. And when something outside of them changes how they feel inside of them, they pay attention to whoever or whatever caused that and they create a memory. That's the old model of reality of cause and effect. Waiting for something outside of you to take your pain away inside of you. The new model of reality is about causing an effect. That means then you have to feel gratitude every day for your new experience to occur. You can't wait for your success to feel empowered. You have to be empowered to create the success. And when you teach people how to do this, and they move into a new state of being, they begin to create the life that they want. Because when you bring up an elevated emotion, you will see the vision clearly. And leaders in history that changed the world knew how to change a culture. Look at Martin Luther King. He talked about justice and then got enough people inspired that they felt empowered enough to do something about it. People came out of the resting state. And so then you share the same brain as Martin Luther King. And being defined by a vision of the future begins to change a culture. So the future then is created by a clear intention and an elevated emotion. Now listen closely that you have to cultivate in your inner environment of thoughts and feelings. And getting a person beyond the old self then is the great work. That's what we're here for. We've studied motivation and I can tell you without a doubt that the highest form of motivation in any culture, in any group of people, is what's called purpose motivation, duty motivation, or mission motivation. You know what that is? To have a vision to change a culture that's bigger than you, to instill change in the world. Look at Elon Musk. He created an electric car that can go from zero to 60 in less than five seconds. And before him, electric cars were like golf carts that you know crawled along the road and he said I'm gonna do this I don't know how I'm gonna do it but I have a vision 
and I'm going to get the best engineers in the world. I'm going to get a group of people to share the same vision as me. I'm going to change the world by changing our reliance on oil. And I am going to make a difference in the world and I am going to make a lot of money. Why not? And so people said, no, that's not possible. And he held on to that vision. And now Motor Trend magazine never rated a car a close to 100. They rated the Tesla car 103. It's the best car on the road. And it relies on no gas at all. That's a vision of the future. High motivators are some people who have a vision bigger than them that are going to change the world and make a difference in a culture. That's the highest form of motivation. We know from our research that people who have purpose motivation have a vision that's bigger than, bigger than them, that are personally convicted, have a great sense of morality, a great sense of ethics because it falls right in alignment. People who have purpose motivation, have personal convictions, have a strong sense of ethics, naturally receive recognition. It's the end product. If you have a vision that's bigger than you, that's to change something, where you contribute to the whole, you have strong personal conviction, a strong sense of ethics, already receiving recognition and don't even need it, the money always comes. It's the natural flow. And we call that in our work affluence. You know what the word affluence means? To flow to you. People who are affluent don't go and get anything. People who are affluent have it come to them. That's who they are. It's a reflection of their state of being. So then, when you have a purpose or a vision or a mission or an intent that's bigger than you, it means it signifies something that's ongoing. You could have a purpose to go east, and there's never an end to east. You could have a purpose to be healthy. There's always more health to have. You could have a purpose to be wealthy. There's a never an end to wealth. You could have a purpose for knowledge and there's never an end to knowledge. It signifies a direction. My purpose is to transform individuals in order to transform a culture. And I'm clear on that purpose and it gets me up in the morning every single day.